guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me Nikita back again with another video helping you to come to the UK as an international student or a healthcare professional. Now a lot of you have showed me great support and encouragement by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel and a lot of you have shared very interesting questions in the comment section of my previous videos and I have felt that some of these questions deserve a video of its own. So today's video is going to be about one such question. So Amulya a couple of days ago asked me a question saying how do you apply for NHS jobs and how long does the process take? Well, Amulya, this is a very interesting question that I think a lot of individuals applying for NHS jobs will have. So as you all know, the process for applying for NHS jobs is something that I've already described in my previous videos and I'm just going to leave the link right up here for all of y'all who are interested in it. But today's video is going to be more about how long did it take for me to get my first job in the NHS right from when I started the application for the interview all along till when I got my starting letter. So if you are interested in it, please keep watching. So we are back again on the Track Jobs website. And for those of you all who are confused about what is Track Jobs and how do you set up a profile on it, I am just going to be leaving the links for the videos above just so that you really understand what are Track Jobs and how do you apply for jobs in the NHS. But in today's video, I will be sharing my exact timelines and as you can see on the screen that this is the exact application history for me and my first NHS job. So let's get right to it. So obviously, once you have completed your profile in the NHS jobs website or the track jobs, you can obviously start an application for any job that is suitable for you. Now, if you are confused about what is the most suitable job and how do you understand more about the jobs, again, there is another video that I have made for it and that I'm going to link about. But as you understand that because there are several steps in an application form in the NHS jobs, such as making the profile, writing a supporting information section and actually submitting it, the date that you started the application may be different from the date you submitted it or it may be same. But once you have submitted your application, you will know that every vacancy on the NHS jobs and every job on the NHS job site or the track job site has a certain closing date. So. Once the vacancy is closed, that vacancy will accept no more applications for that particular job. And now say, for example, the vacancy closed on 17th of May. Usually it would take the interviewers and the panel about five to seven days to decide from all of the applications. Say, for example, they received hundreds of applications for a job, which five or seven they would like to call for an interview. So now say your application has been shortlisted and the interviewer has given you a call. Uh, sorry, they don't usually give you a call. They will usually put out a message or an email to you saying that they've invited you for an interview and they will give you the date and time and the location for the interview. Now, again, in my personal experience, because I received a job during COVID times, a lot of interviews were happening virtually, that is through Zoom or MS Teams. Uh, but in the present time now, because UK has opened up and all of its lockdown restrictions are very minimal, uh, people may be invited for face-to-face -face interviews. Now, again, you'll say, oh, hold on, Nikita. But what if I am not in UK? What if I'm in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Philippines? Well, I would just say that if you are invited for an interview, just maybe inform them via email because you will always have the contact information on the advertisement saying who do you need to contact in case you need to ask them something. So just contact that person and let them know that you are not in the UK and if ask them if they can do a virtual interview session or something like that. Just because it will help them and you prepare much in advance for your interview. So obviously now you have been invited for the interview, you have a date and time, you give the interview and successfully you have cleared the interview. So you have completed the interview and you have been selected, you are going to be offered the job. So you will say, how, how long does that take me? Now, okay, I gave my interview say on 23rd of May, how long do I need to wait to know whether I've been successful or no? I'd say just about one to two days. So the NHS employers are quite good in the way that they will obviously inform you quite soon. They don't take more than two to three days to inform you about the outcome of the interview. So once they've informed you about the outcome of the interview, they're then going to contact the HRs of the NHS Trust, 
who then need to issue an offer of employment. So now this offer of employment is again a more conditional offer of employment. That is, if you meet the pre-employment checks, only then will you be provided with an unconditional offer letter that states your starting date. So let's just understand a little bit more about what are the pre-employment checks. So before we just move ahead, I would just like to quickly give a shout out to all of y'all who have dropped amazing questions in the form of comments for my previous videos. I've really appreciated them and I've taken the time out to reply to them as soon as possible. And I will also be making loads of videos related to the questions that you guys have. So if you are interested or if you have any questions that are troubling you or that you would like more information about, please do not forget to leave them down in the comment section below. But also, if you are liking this content, please, please, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and help this channel grow as well. But moving straight ahead. So as you can see, we're again on the track jobs website. But over here, this is a different screen that I'm sharing at the moment because this is going to be telling you more about the employment checks. Now, this is one of the reasons that I really prefer using track jobs rather than the NHS jobs website. Just because all of this information is so clearly and easily just mentioned over here. Whereas on the NHS jobs website, it gets slightly more confusing. So as you can see, you will receive your conditional offer letter immediately after the interview uh, has been over and you have been selected to start the particular position. So the conditional offer letter is obviously sent to you from the HR of the NHS trust. But the conditional offer letter states that you need to complete some of these employment checks that we're quickly going to run through. So the first and the most important check is your ID check. So here they will ask you for about two documents that state your identity. So you can either issue your passport, your BRP, your driving license, any photo IDs of yourself. And you need to also provide proof of residence. So it can be either a council tax bill or a bank statement. Um, so they obviously have some prerequisites that they will email to you and you can just see what IDs you have and then provide those respective IDs. Now, the next thing that is really important when you want to start working in the NHS is convictions. So obviously, people who work in the healthcare are supposed to not have any convictions. They're not supposed to have criminal offense. And one of the easiest ways in the NHS to do this is by having a disclosure barring service certificate or the DBS. So the DBS basically runs your name across the criminal record database in the UK and then just issues a certificate that is a DBS certificate saying that so and so person say, for example, Nikita has not had any criminal offense and now she can work with children and adults. So if you are working for working with children, you obviously need an enhanced DBS because they are a part of the more vulnerable population. But yes, this will be something that your NHS employer will help you get. So do not worry about the DBS. It is something that your NHS employers will help you with. Now, the next most important thing is obviously having your occupational health checks. So in the NHS, for you to be able to work and continue working, you need to have some occupational health checks. Now, these are very simple. So they will basically be in terms of your vaccination history. So whether you had your BCG vaccine, your MMR, that is your measles, mumps, rubella, if you've had any sort of hepatitis vaccines, all of this history will be collected from you. And if you do not have records to prove that you've taken these vaccines, for example, say I was from India and I did not have my vaccination history with me when I was over here, all they will ask you to do is do a blood test and they will run serology levels just to see if you have the antibodies for these particular diseases in your body. And if you do not have it, they will again administer it for you. So yes, this is a bit about the occupational health. And simultaneously, while these three are happening, the NHS HRs will also contact your references uh, just to verify that you are a person with good character uh, and with no previous complaints from your previous employers. So they will run reference checks for you. So now once you have completed all of these employment checks, we will again come back to the application history page. And once you've obviously completed all of your employment checks and the NHS employer is satisfied that you have met all of these checks, 
they will now issue something known as the certificate of sponsorship or the cos this is the key letter that you need in order to apply for your skill worker visa that is your healthcare visa now once you've received the cos that is the certificate of sponsorship from your nhs employer you can now apply for your healthcare visa and i think that the healthcare visa is the best visa out there for us right now uh, just because it has two benefits literally the first is that it is much much cheaper as compared to the actual skill worker visa um and it costs you just i think about 250 pounds but do not take my word for it i'm just going to leave the link for it right down below in the description box and the second reason i think that the skill worker visa is really helpful is because it takes about 1 to 3 weeks according to the official government guidelines for a decision to be received from your skilled worker visa application and you know once you've done your biometrics and everything it will just take about 1 to 3 weeks and in my personal experience i think it just took me about 1 week for my skilled worker visa to actually arrive so within 1 to 2 weeks i got the visa to start you know to be employed from the nhs and once you've received all of this you've completed all of your pre employment checks you've got your visa and you've met all of the requirements for the nhs they will actually offer you with a starting date now this date is obviously going to be negotiated with your manager so you obviously need to email them saying that you've completed all of your pre employment checks you have your visa and they will send you a starting date and a starting date letter and this is your unconditional offer letter so on this it will clearly be mentioned your terms and conditions of employment so all of the information related to where you will be working how many hours you will be working what is your salary what are your holidays in the week how many annual leaves you are entitled to um and all of this information will be mentioned in your unconditional offer letter or the starting letter so yes once you have received your starting letter you or your unconditional of a letter for your job you can just start working as soon as possible in the uk but this was a video just helping you identify all of the processes that you need to complete before you even start the job and as you can see that it is a lengthy process even once you have cleared the interview so all i would say is just be confident in your abilities keep chasing up the nhs trust the hrs your manager to help you get all of your documents help you get the cos letter that is a sponsorship letter to apply for your visa and yes just come to the uk and start working as soon as possible you guys but that's it for today and i hope you like this content and if you did please do not forget to hit the thumbs up or the like button for this video share it amongst your friends and colleagues who want to come to the uk and work as a healthcare professional and if you would not mind please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon just so that you receive all of the latest contents from my videos and like i've said before please do not hesitate to leave any feedback or any questions that you have in the comment section below and i will try to get back to them as soon as possible but that's it for today you guys take care bye bye